Museo Poldi Pizzoli in Milan, museum founded in 1881 in the former private house of John Giacomo Poldi Pizzoli, exhibiting his collection of arms and armor from the 14th to the 17th century and Italian paintings from the Renaissance in the 18th century. The museum is also home to antique tapestries, watches from the 16th to the 19th century, lace, embroidery, jewelry, sculpture, drawings, and other objects. Notable works include portraits of Martin Luther and his wife by Lucas Cranach, paintings of the Madonna and Child by Andrea Mantegna and by Sandro Botticelli, Saint Nicholas of Tolentino by Piero della Francesca, portrait of a lady by Piero del Pola Iolo, and a self-portrait by Sofo Nisba and Guisola. The rooms were once decorated with murals, wood carvings, stucco, and stained glass windows, but most of these embellishments were destroyed when the building was bombed during World War II. The Dante Room's frescoes and stained glass windows, which were inspired by the Middle Ages, remained largely intact. The museum was rebuilt after the war, though with less ornamentation, and reopened to the public in 1951. It continued to expand its collection in subsequent decades, and the Franzini Wing was opened in 2017 to accommodate recent acquisitions. Facebook Twitter email WhatsApp The Poldi Pizzoli Museum is an art gallery in Milan that is less well known by the general public but has an extraordinary collection of works. It contains the fascinating bequest of collector and aristocrat John Giacomo Poldi Pizzoli, 1822-1879, and features masterpieces by the old masters, including Michelangelo, Filippo Lippi, Andrea Mantegna, Bellini, Piero della Francesca, Raphael, Canaletto, Tiepolo, and Botticelli. It also contains Renaissance keepsakes and remarkable furniture. It's definitely worth visiting the room of clocks that were donated by Bruno Falk and Piero Portaluppi, while literature fans mustn't miss the space dedicated to Dante, which is a real treasure. The museum is housed in a lovely 17th-century palace in the center of Milan, close to the Teatro alla Scala. Origins of the Poldi Pizzoli Museum To understand who John Giacomo Poldi Pizzoli was, it's important to look first to his mother, Rosa Trivulzio, who had to care for him when he was young after the death of her husband. She was the daughter of Prince John Giacomo Trivulzio, a great admirer of literature and poetry who socialized with writers of the period such as Vincenzo Mondi and Giuseppe Perini. In his youth, John Giacomo Poldi Pizzoli grew up surrounded by men and women of letters, and lovers of culture and the arts. When he inherited at the age of 24, Poldi Pizzoli had already been instilled with a love of art by his mother. Shortly afterwards, the young aristocrat gave his support for the 1848 revolution. This meant he was forced into exile and his assets were confiscated by the Austrian government. Austrian repression forced him to move to Europe, which gave him the chance to meet other international collectors, soak up European art and visit the first Universal exhibitions. In London, he was fascinated by the space that would later become the Victoria and Albert Museum. Poli Pizzoli began to accumulate paintings and other works of art, such as weapons, ceramics, rugs, archaeology, gold and silver work etc. This was probably when he bought the largest 16th century Persian rug in the world, today in the Poldi Pizzoli Museum. On his return to Milan, he recovered the family home and lived there for the rest of his life, surrounded by wonderful pieces of art and valuable objects. During this time, he hired cabinet makers, painters and scenographers to decorate his home as if it were a theater stage, each room had a different design to best present the pieces that would be displayed there. The Golden Room at the Poldi Pizzoli Museum The most visited rooms at the museum are the Armory, designed by sculptor Arnaldo Pomodoro, and the Golden Room, which displays this unusual museum's greatest masterpieces, including the Pietà by Botticelli and the Portrait of a Lady by Antonio Pola Iolo, an emblem of the institution. Here you'll also find a Virgin and Child by Mantegna, Ecce Homo by Bellini and works by Piero della Francesca and Botticelli. The room has wonderful views of the rear garden of this lovely building, which has rooms decorated in varying styles from the Trecento to the Baroque. Its unique decoration has inspired other house museums, such as those belonging to American Isabella Stewart Gardner in Boston, and French couple Nelly Jacques Mar and Edward Andre. A museum for the benefit of the public When Poldi Pizzoli died in 1879 aged 57, he left his two-story house and collection to the Pinacoteca di Brera, internal length. Its director, Giuseppe Bertini, prepared the Poldi Pizzoli Museum for its official opening in 1881. In his will, the aristocrat wrote that his house should be converted into a museum for the use and benefit of the public, in perpetuity. 
During the Second World War, the Pol di Pozzoli Museum was irreparably damaged but the collection was unharmed because it had been evacuated before the bombing. However, the windows, stucco and sculptures were completely destroyed, some pieces had been rebuilt following the originals. The museum reopened in 1951. During the second half of the 20th century, the Pol di Pozzoli Museum has welcomed important bequests from significant collections covering everything from textiles to clocks and paintings. The Pol di Pozzoli Museum is in the heart of Milan, just moments from the Galleria Vittorio Emanuele II, the Pinacoteca di Brera, Milan Cathedral, and Piazza Mercanti. It's also close to Via Monte Napoleone, so if you have some free time, head here to enjoy the smartest and most exclusive shops in the city. And finally, there's an interesting story to be told about the Pol di Pozzoli Museum.